Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 55 years of ministry. Andrew, I want to personally say thank you for, for what you have been able to do for us in your, your adamant pursuit of the Word um, and how you have not wavered, you've not gotten into the grandstands, and you have delivered that to us. I might be one voice, but I represent millions and millions of changed lives. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of The Gospel Truth. This week, I'm teaching on four basics to hearing God's voice. I wrote a little booklet on this. This is a 60-page booklet that I'm giving to you as a free gift. And then we have a teaching that goes into more detail on your conscience. And this book is entitled, Who Told You That You Were Naked? We've had people write in before and say, I want that book on how to be naked. <laughs> this really isn't about that. This is a quotation of what God said to Adam when uh, he said, uh, you know, that he was naked and he hid himself and sewed fig leaves together. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? And it was his conscience that told him that. When he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, his conscience gave him that knowledge. And so this first step in hearing God's voice is that God speaks to every person, even non-believers, through a conscience. There is an intuitive knowledge of right and wrong on the inside of every single person. Now, some people disagree with that because they see people today who are just living in sin and they say that they have no conviction whatsoever about what they're doing. That's a lie. All right, let me rephrase that. Let me say it this way, that nobody started without a conscience. Every one of us has had a conscience that has told us the things that are evil are wrong. BUT YOU CAN DEADEN YOURSELF TO THAT CONSCIENCE. AS IT SAYS IN 1 uh, TIMOTHY CHAPTER 4, YOU CAN SEAR YOUR CONSCIENCE WITH A HOT IRON. I'M TAKING SCRIPTURES OUT OF ROMANS CHAPTER 1, AND DOWN IN VERSE 28, IT SAYS THAT YOU CAN BECOME REPROBATE, WHICH MEANS GOD JUST QUIT SPEAKING TO YOU THROUGH A CONSCIENCE. BUT THAT IS A TERRIBLE, TERRIBLE THING TO HAPPEN. ONCE THAT HAPPENS, THERE IS NO RESTRAINT IN YOUR LIFE WHATSOEVER. YOU ARE GIVEN OVER TO THE DEVIL AND THERE IS NO CHANCE OF YOU COMING BACK FROM THAT. SO NOBODY STARTED WITHOUT A CONSCIENCE, BUT YOU CAN KILL YOUR CONSCIENCE, BUT IT'S NOT EASY TO DO. AND I BELIEVE THAT A LOT OF THE STUFF THAT WE SEE TODAY WHERE PEOPLE ARE COMING OUT AND PROMOTING UNGODLINESS AND DEMANDING THAT EVERYBODY ELSE ACCEPT THEIR ACTS OF UNGODLINESS AND STUFF. IT'S AN ATTEMPT TO TRY AND OVERCOME THE VOICE THAT THEY ARE HEARING FROM THEIR OWN CONSCIENCE. THEY'RE TRYING TO GET SO MUCH ACCEPTANCE AND VALIDATION FROM OTHER PEOPLE AROUND THEM THAT IT DROWNS OUT THIS CONVICTION ON THE INSIDE. SO LET ME GO BACK AND JUST READ SOME VERSES THAT I READ YESTERDAY. ROMANS CHAPTER 1, VERSE 18 SAYS, FOR THE WRATH OF GOD IS REVEALED FROM HEAVEN AGAINST ALL UNGODLINESS AND UNRIGHTEOUSNESS OF MEN WHO HOLD THE TRUTH AND UNRIGHTEOUSNESS. NOW, SOME PEOPLE WILL SAY, NO, I DON'T HAVE ANY CONVICTION. THAT'S A LIE. RIGHT HERE IT SAYS GOD HAS REVEALED HIMSELF. THE ONLY EXCEPTION WOULD BE IS IF YOU HAVE REJECTED GOD SO MANY TIMES THAT YOU ARE NOW REPROBATE AND BEYOND BEING CONVICTED BY YOUR CONSCIENCE. BUT THAT IS SOMETHING THAT IT TAKES A LONG PERIOD OF TIME AND A LOT OF EFFORT TO OVERCOME THE VOICE OF THIS CONSCIENCE. IN VERSE 19 IT SAYS, BECAUSE THAT WHICH MAY BE KNOWN OF GOD IS MANIFEST IN THEM. NOTICE IT DIDN'T SAY TO THEM. IT'S IN THEM. IT'S INTUITIVE. IT'S ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY ONE OF US, THIS SENSE OF RIGHT AND WRONG. FOR GOD HAS SHOWN IT UNTO THEM. FOR THE INVISIBLE THINGS OF HIM FROM THE CREATION OF THE WORLD ARE CLEARLY SEEN. NOTICE IT'S NOT VAGUE. THIS ISN'T SOMETHING THAT IS SUBJECTIVE AND THAT SOME PEOPLE FEEL THIS WAY. NO, EVERY PERSON AT ONE TIME CLEARLY KNEW RIGHT FROM WRONG. YOU KNOW, I'VE NEVER GONE OUT AND GOT INTO DRUGS AND ALCOHOL AND INTO ALL OF THAT KIND OF STUFF, BUT I HAD A LOT OF FRIENDS WHO DID IT. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU THE VERY FIRST TIME THEY EVER DID DRUGS AND THEY GOT HIGH AND DID SOMETHING, THEY FELT BAD ABOUT IT. THEY KNEW IT WAS WRONG. THEIR CONSCIENCE WAS TELLING THEM NOT TO DO IT, BUT THEY VIOLATED IT. AND EVERY TIME YOU VIOLATE YOUR CONSCIENCE, YOU DECREASE ITS VOICE JUST A LITTLE BIT. YOU DECREASE ITS IMPACT. AND AFTER YOU DO IT REPETITIVELY OVER AND OVER AND OVER, YOU CAN GET TO A PLACE TO WHERE YOU CAN GO GET DRUNK, YOU CAN GO DO DRUGS, 
Uh, you, you can do cigarettes, which, you know, you don't go to hell for smoking a cigarette, but you'll smell like you've been there. And most people, the first time they do this, they have a reservation about it. They know that it's not good for their body. And yet you deaden yourself and you get to a point that you can do it with no conviction whatsoever. But at one time, every single person knew this. It was manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. And verse 20 says, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that you are without excuse. You know, I used this illustration a few months back on my television program, but uh, this is just a great illustration of this, that one of the men who worked for me back about a decade ago, uh, he was raised in an atheist home and they didn't believe in God. He was taught that believing in God was foolish. And so that was his background. And he was actually taught against God. And so when he heard me teach on this, he came to me and he said, look, I respect you and I've gotten a lot of good. He'd since been born again and he now loves God. But he said that when he was a kid, there was no awareness of God, no awareness of right and wrong. He said he was just raised that way. And he said he respects me and he understands what I was saying here, but he says it just wasn't that way for him. And I said, well, I don't know what to say. Am I supposed to believe you over what I believe the Word of God teaches? I mean, these verses says this has happened to every single person. So I told him, I said, I'm not against you, but I believe the Word of God. You, you just deceived yourself. You've forgotten or something, but I can guarantee you at one time you knew that there was a God and you knew that there was right and wrong. So anyway, he left and he started thinking and praying about this and just asking the Lord if what I was saying was correct for the Lord to show him. And the Lord brought back to his remembrance that he was raised in Los Angeles. And when he was, I don't know, 10 years old, 12 years old, somewhere around there, he climbed a hill up over Los Angeles to watch the sunset. And as the sun began to set, all of these lights started coming on in Los Angeles. There was millions of lights. And he said that as he watched all of these lights begin to come on, he just got to thinking about how much effort it took to put those lights there. Every one of those lights had to be put there. They didn't just happen. Somebody put there. And he was just thinking about how much effort it was to have these millions and millions and millions of lights installed. And then he says, as it got totally dark, he quit looking at the city and he just lifted his eyes and saw the, the, all of the millions of lights that were in the sky. And he said, all of a sudden, it just came crystal clear to him that just in the same way that every one of those lights in Los Angeles didn't just happen, somebody put them there. It was on purpose. Every one of these lights in the sky, the stars, all had to be put there by someone. And he said, all of a sudden, he just knew there was a God. And when he went home, he said something to his parents. And of course, his parents were atheists and didn't believe in that. And so they discredited it and he just pushed that to the side. But he said that all of a sudden he had a flashback and he remembered that at one time he knew that there was a God, just exactly as these verses say. Every single person that has ever breathed on this planet is held accountable so that like it says here in Romans 1, 20, they are without excuse. God will judge us according to the knowledge that we have. And not everybody has the same knowledge that I have or that you have watching a Christian television program. But every person that has ever been, that has ever breathed upon this planet, it has had this intuitive knowledge of right and wrong on the inside of them and even His eternal power and Godhead. They've known that they need a Savior, that they need forgiveness. Their own heart has convicted them of sin. And when they stand before God, there's going to be no one that will ever point their finger at God and say, it isn't fair, I didn't know. You may not have known everything I know or everything that somebody else knows, but every one of you watching this program knows that there is a God and that you are not Him and that because you have failed to be the person that God intended you to be, there is going to come a, coming a day of accountability and you are going to stand before God and you will not shake your fist at God and say it's not fair. You will recognize that you violated 
YOUR CONSCIENCE, THAT YOU WENT AGAINST THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD, AND I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU WILL BE CRYING OUT FOR MERCY. AS IT SAYS IN PHILIPPIANS CHAPTER 2, EVERY KNEE WILL BOW AND EVERY TONGUE WILL CONFESS THAT JESUS IS LORD. THERE'S NOT GOING TO BE ANY ARGUMENTS. WHEN YOU SEE THE GLORY OF GOD, IT'S GOING TO OVERWHELM YOU. YOU KNOW, I KNOW THAT THE MAJORITY OF PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM, EVEN IF YOU'RE BORN AGAIN, VERY FEW PEOPLE HAVE A RELATIONSHIP WITH THE LORD WHERE YOU'VE REALLY SEEN HIS GLORY, WHERE YOU'VE HAD IT REVEALED TO YOU. I'M NOT TALKING ABOUT SEEING IT WITH YOUR PHYSICAL EYES, BUT MOST PEOPLE HAVE NEVER COMPREHENDED THE GLORY OF GOD. THEY'VE NEVER REALLY UNDERSTOOD HOW AWESOME GOD IS. AND I DON'T CLAIM THAT I HAVE A FULL REVELATION OF IT, BUT ON IN 1968, I SAW THE GLORY OF GOD. I SAW HIS HOLINESS AND HIS GOODNESS. AND I CAN GUARANTEE YOU, WHEN YOU ARE IN THE PRESENCE OF GOD, YOU COULD GO THROUGH PERSON AFTER PERSON AFTER PERSON IN THE BIBLE. MOSES, uh, DAVID, EZEKIEL, DANIEL FELL AT HIS FEET AS IF HE WAS DEAD. PETER, WHEN HE SAW THE GLORY OF GOD, MAN, HE THREW HIMSELF IN THE SEA, SAID HE WAS NAKED AND PUT HIS FISHER'S COAT AROUND HIM. EVERY TIME A PERSON SAW THE GLORY OF GOD REVEALED, THEY FELL AT HIS FEET IN TOTAL REPENTANCE, RECOGNIZING HIS PURITY AND THEIR RELATIVE UNWORTHINESS. AND WHEN WE STAND BEFORE GOD, THERE'S NOT GOING TO BE ANYBODY WHO ARGUES FOR THEIR ADULTEROUS LIFESTYLE, THEIR HOMOSEXUAL LIFESTYLE, THEIR TRANSGENDER LIFESTYLE, THEIR LYING, CHEATING, AND STEALING, AND NOBODY'S GOING TO BE ARGUING AND SAYING, IT'S NOT FAIR, AND I WASN'T THAT BAD. WHEN YOU SEE THE GLORY OF GOD, I GUARANTEE YOU, YOU'RE GOING TO BE REPENTING IN SACKCLOTH AND ASHES. BUT IF YOU WAIT UNTIL YOU'RE STANDING BEFORE GOD BEFORE YOU DO THAT, IT'S TOO LATE. YOU CAN ONLY CHOOSE ONE OF YOUR TWO DESTINATIONS, HEAVEN OR HELL, IN THIS LIFE. ONCE THIS LIFE IS OVER AND YOU'RE STANDING BEFORE GOD, THE DIE IS CAST. THE DECISION HAS BEEN MADE AND THERE IS NO REPENTANCE. AND SO YOU NEED TO RESPOND RIGHT NOW. I KNOW THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE WATCHING ME THAT IN YOUR HEART YOU MAY BE LIVING ONE WAY AND YOU'RE SITTING THERE TRYING TO JUSTIFY IT AND YOU LOOK AROUND AND THERE'S PLENTY OF OTHER PEOPLE LIVING THAT WAY AND SAYING THAT THERE'S NO CONSEQUENCE, THERE ISN'T A HEAVEN AND A HELL AND THAT YOU WON'T EVER HAVE TO ANSWER. YOU COULD LIVE LIKE A DOG AND THERE'S PLENTY OF PEOPLE THAT WILL VALIDATE WHAT YOU'RE DOING. BUT IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW THAT'S NOT TRUE. IN YOUR HEART RIGHT NOW, GOD IS SPEAKING TO YOU GOD IS SPEAKING TO YOU THROUGH ME, AND YOUR HEART IS BEARING WITNESS. YOU KNOW THERE IS A FEAR ON THE INSIDE OF YOU THAT SOMEDAY YOU'RE GOING TO BE HELD ACCOUNTABLE FOR THE WAY THAT YOU'RE LIVING. AND EVEN THOUGH THAT MAY NOT BE WHAT YOUR CULTURE IS SAYING, YOUR HEART IS TELLING YOU THAT. YOU HAVE THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE. AND I'M TELLING YOU, THE RIGHT RESPONSE IS FOR YOU TO HUMBLE YOURSELF AND TO REJECT THE WAY THAT THIS WORLD IS GOING. THIS WORLD IS HEADED TO HELL. THE VAST MAJORITY OF PEOPLE ARE GOING TO WIND UP IN HELL AND YOU AREN'T GOING TO HAVE ANY COMFORT IN JUST LOOKING AROUND AND SEEING ALL OF YOUR FRIENDS ARE IN HELL, TOO. NO, I GUARANTEE IT'S GOING TO BE A TERRIBLE PLACE. AND IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW WHAT I'M SAYING IS RIGHT, AND YOU NEED TO RESPOND TO WHAT THE HOLY SPIRIT IS CONVICTING YOU. RIGHT NOW, HE'S CONVICTING YOU THROUGH YOUR CONSCIENCE. YOU KNOW, WE'VE GOT A NUMBER THAT WE'LL PUT ON THE SCREEN, AND YOU CAN CALL, AND WE'VE GOT PEOPLE THERE 24-7 THAT COULD PRAY WITH YOU. GOD LOVES YOU. AND HE PUT THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF RIGHT AND WRONG ON THE INSIDE OF YOU BECAUSE HE WANTS YOU TO RECOGNIZE THAT YOU HAVE SINNED AND COME SHORT. NOT BECAUSE HE WANTS TO CONDEMN YOU AND MAKE YOU MISERABLE, BUT SO THAT YOU WILL QUIT TRYING TO SAVE YOURSELF, SO THAT YOU WILL JUST QUIT FOLLOWING THE HERD AS THEY GO TO HELL, THAT YOU WILL HAVE SOMETHING ON THE INSIDE THAT IS RESTRAINING YOU AND TELLING YOU, NO, THIS ISN'T THE WAY TO GO. THAT'S YOUR CONSCIENCE SPEAKING TO YOU. THIS IS THE FOUNDATIONAL WAY THAT GOD SPEAKS TO EVERYBODY. AND THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT YOU IN YOUR HEART KNOW YOU'RE HEADED IN THE WRONG DIRECTION AND YOU FEAR THAT THERE IS GOING TO BE ACCOUNTABILITY AND THAT THERE'S GOING TO BE TERRIBLE CONSEQUENCES. BUT GOD LOVES YOU AND GOD SENT HIS SON JESUS TO PAY FOR YOUR SINS. YOU DON'T HAVE TO PAY FOR YOUR OWN SINS. SOME OF YOU THINK, OH, I'VE DONE TOO MUCH. I CAN'T COME BACK. JESUS' SACRIFICE IS SO MUCH GREATER THAN YOUR SIN THAT THERE ISN'T EVEN A COMPARISON. IT'S LIKE YOU HAVING A LITTLE TINY TEACUP 
OF WATER, AND HERE COMES GOD'S LOVE LIKE A TSUNAMI THAT JUST OVERWHELMS ALL OF YOUR SIN. GOD'S SACRIFICE IS GREATER THAN YOUR SIN, AND I'M TELLING YOU THAT THERE IS FORGIVENESS AVAILABLE, BUT YOU HAVE TO RECEIVE IT. IT ISN'T AUTOMATIC. JESUS DIED FOR YOUR SINS, BUT IT SAYS IN ROMANS 10, 9 THAT YOU HAVE TO CONFESS WITH YOUR MOUTH THAT JESUS IS YOUR LORD AND BELIEVE IN YOUR HEART THAT GOD RAISED HIM FROM THE DEAD. SO YOU HAVE TO TURN YOUR LIFE OVER HIM. YOU HAVE TO MAKE HIM LORD. IT DOESN'T MEAN THAT YOU'RE PROMISING THAT YOU'LL NEVER SIN BECAUSE YOU CAN'T FULFILL THAT. WE ALL CONSTANTLY FALL SHORT. BUT YOU HAVE TO BE WILLING TO SAY, GOD, I WANT TO LIVE FOR YOU. I WANT MY LIFE TO BE YOURS. I RECEIVE WHAT JESUS HAS DONE FOR ME, AND YOU MAKE HIM YOUR LORD, AND YOU HAVE TO CONFESS THAT. AND IF YOU WILL DO THAT, IT GOES ON TO SAY IN ROMANS 10, 13, WHOEVER WILL CALL UPON THE NAME OF THE LORD SHALL BE SAVED. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT NATION YOU'RE IN. IT DOESN'T MATTER HOW FAR FROM GOD YOU'VE GONE. IF YOUR HEART IS CONVICTING YOU RIGHT NOW AND YOU DO NOT HAVE THAT ASSURANCE THAT YOU ARE FORGIVEN, BUT INSTEAD YOUR HEART IS CONVICTING YOU THAT YOU'VE SINNED AND THAT YOU NEED A SAVIOR, ALL YOU HAVE TO DO IS CALL OUT TO HIM, AND YOU CAN BE BORN AGAIN RIGHT NOW. AGAIN, I WANT TO ENCOURAGE YOU TO CALL THAT NUMBER. THERE ARE PEOPLE THAT WILL PRAY WITH YOU AND EXPLAIN THINGS, ANSWER YOUR QUESTIONS. WE'VE GOT MATERIALS THAT WE'LL GIVE YOU. BUT REGARDLESS OF WHAT THIS CULTURE SAYS, THIS CULTURE SAYS THAT, NO, THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH ADULTERY. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH HOMOSEXUALITY. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH TRANSGENDERISM. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH TAKING CHILDREN AND BLOCKING THEIR HORMONES AND CUTTING OFF PARTS OF THEIR BODIES AND DOING THINGS. AND THE CULTURE IS SAYING THAT ALL OF THIS STUFF IS NOW ACCEPTABLE. BUT IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW THAT THAT'S A LIE. AND YOU MAY HAVE EVEN PARTICIPATED IN IT. YOU CAN TURN FROM THAT RIGHT NOW. AND SOMEDAY WHEN YOU STAND BEFORE GOD, IF YOU DO NOT RESPOND TO WHAT I'M SAYING RIGHT NOW AND WHAT YOU ARE BEARING WITNESS IN YOUR HEART, IF YOU DON'T RESPOND, YOU'LL STAND BEFORE GOD AND GOD WILL REMIND YOU OF THIS PROGRAM. GOD WILL REMIND YOU OF THIS DAY THAT YOU HEARD THE TRUTH AND THAT YOUR CONSCIENCE BORE WITNESS. AND IT'LL BE JUST EXACTLY AS IT SAYS IN ROMANS 1.20, YOU WILL BE WITHOUT EXCUSE. YOU WON'T BE ABLE TO SAY YOU DIDN'T KNOW. GOD IS SPEAKING TO YOU TODAY. GOD IS TOUCHING PEOPLE'S HEARTS, AND YOU NEED TO RESPOND. AND THE GOOD NEWS IS GOD WANTS YOU TO RESPOND. HE LOVES YOU. I DON'T CARE WHAT YOU'VE DONE. HE LOVES YOU, AND HE DIED FOR YOUR SINS, AND IT'S AVAILABLE. WHOSOEVER WILL CAN CALL UPON THE NAME OF THE LORD AND BE SAVED. HE'S PROVIDED IT, BUT HE'S NOT GOING TO FORCE IT ON YOU. IT'S NOT GOING TO WORK AUTOMATICALLY. YOU HAVE TO CALL OUT FOR THIS. SO AGAIN, CALL THAT NUMBER. AND PRAY WITH SOMEONE AND RECEIVE SALVATION TODAY. MAN, WE WOULD LOVE TO DO THAT. WE'VE GOT CALL CENTERS IN MANY DIFFERENT NATIONS AROUND THE COUNTRY, AND, and PRAISE GOD, YOU CAN RECEIVE. IF FOR SOME REASON YOU AREN'T IN A POSITION WHERE YOU CAN CALL SOMEBODY, YOU CAN ALWAYS GO TO OUR WEBSITE. THERE'S INFORMATION THERE ABOUT HOW TO RECEIVE JESUS AS YOUR SAVIOR. WE'VE GOT MATERIALS THAT WILL HELP YOU, BUT YOU NEED TO RESPOND TODAY. I JUST KNOW IN MY HEART THAT GOD IS EXPLAINING THINGS. SOME OF YOU HAVE HAD THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE, BUT YOU'VE SUPPRESSED IT. YOU'VE PUSHED IT DOWN. YOU'VE BEEN LISTENING TO THE OTHER VOICES OF THIS WORLD THAT ARE TELLING YOU THAT YOUR SIN IS ABSOLUTELY FINE AND ACCEPTABLE. THERE'S NOTHING WRONG WITH IT. BUT IN YOUR HEART, YOU KNOW IT'S NOT TRUE, AND YOU NEED TO RESPOND. GOD IS SPEAKING TO SOME OF YOU, AND YOU NEED TO RESPOND RIGHT NOW. YOU DON'T NEED TO WAIT AND DO IT SOME OTHER TIME. YOU NEED TO RESPOND. JUST CALL OUT TO THE LORD AND TELL HIM THAT YOU'RE SORRY FOR YOUR SINS, THAT YOU BELIEVE JESUS DIED FOR YOUR SINS, THAT HE'S ALREADY PAID FOR IT, AND NOW YOU'RE ACCEPTING THAT PAYMENT BY PUTTING FAITH IN JESUS. YOU ARE MAKING JESUS THE LORD OF YOUR LIFE. YOU BELIEVE HE'S ALIVE AND LIVING ON THE INSIDE OF YOU, THAT HE'S FORGIVEN YOUR SINS AND HE COMES TO LIVE ON THE INSIDE OF YOU. AND IF YOU WILL PRAY THAT AND MEAN THAT FROM YOUR HEART, YOU'LL BE BORN AGAIN IS WHAT THE SCRIPTURE SAYS. PRAISE GOD, AND PLEASE CALL AND LET US HELP YOU SOME MORE. BUT LET ME GO BACK TO THIS, THAT EVERY PERSON HAS THIS INTUITIVE KNOWLEDGE OF GOD ON THE INSIDE OF THEM. THAT'S YOUR CONSCIENCE. THAT IS THE MOST FOUNDATIONAL WAY THAT GOD SPEAKS TO US. HE HAS PUT A VOICE ON THE INSIDE OF EVERY ONE OF US THAT HAS A KNOWLEDGE OF RIGHT AND WRONG. IT IS NOT A PERFECT KNOWLEDGE. IT CAN BE EXASPERATED. IT CAN BE AMPLIFIED. LIKE IN MY CASE, I WAS RAISED IN A RELIGIOUS HOME, 
AND OF COURSE THEY TAUGHT AGAINST SEXUAL IMMORALITY, BUT THEY WENT SO FAR AS TO SAY THINGS THAT WENT BEYOND WHAT WAS PROPER. AND THEY JUST PUT CONDEMNATION ON YOU. YOU KNOW, THIS IS THE SAME THING THAT HAPPENED TO EVE. GOD TOLD ADAM NOT TO EAT OF THE TREE OF THE KNOWLEDGE OF GOOD AND EVIL, BECAUSE IN THE DAY YOU EAT OF THE TREE, YOU WILL SURELY DIE. WHEN THE SERPENT CAME AND TEMPTED EVE, SHE SAYS, WE NOT ONLY CAN'T EAT OF IT, WE CAN'T TOUCH IT, LEST WE DIE. DID YOU KNOW GOD DIDN'T SAY THAT? EVE ADDED TO IT. THAT WAS THE FIRST INKLING OF RELIGION GIVEN IN THE BIBLE, THAT SHE ADDED TO WHAT GOD SAID, THAT YOU CAN'T ONLY NOT EAT OF IT, BUT YOU CAN'T EVEN TOUCH IT. AND WHEN YOU LOOK IN uh, GENESIS CHAPTER 3, VERSE 6, IT SAYS THAT THE WOMAN SAW THE TREE THAT IT WAS PLEASANT TO THE EYES AND A TREE TO BE DESIRED TO MAKE ONE WISE. SHE TOOK OF THE FRUIT THEREOF, COMMA, AND ate OF IT. WHAT THAT COMMA MEANS IS SHE FIRST OF ALL TOUCHED IT AND JUST HELD IT. AND WHEN SHE VIOLATED HER OWN COMMAND, HER OWN RESTRICTION, AND NOTHING HAPPENED, THEN SHE WAS EMBOLDENED TO GO AHEAD AND EAT THE FRUIT, AND THAT'S WHEN SHE REALLY TRANSGRESSED. WELL, THE SAME THING HAPPENS. THERE'S RELIGION THAT'S COME ALONG, AND THERE'S ACTUALLY SOME DENOMINATIONS. THERE IS A RELIGIOUS BIBLE SCHOOL THAT IF A MAN WEARS A SHIRT THAT IS SHORT sleeve, IF IT DOESN'T HAVE CUFFS DOWN TO THE, UH, DOWN TO YOUR WRIST, THEN THAT'S IMMODEST, AND YOU GET DEMERITS FOR THAT. Uh, THEY SAY THAT WOMEN HAVE TO WEAR THEIR DRESSES ALL THE WAY TO THE FLOOR, THAT YOU CAN'T WEAR MAKEUP, YOU CAN'T WEAR JEWELRY, YOU CAN'T HAVE GOLD ANYWHERE. AND THEY TAKE THIS FROM 1 PETER CHAPTER 3 WHERE IT SAYS, DON'T LET YOUR OUTWARD ADORNING BE THE PLATTING OF THE HAIR OR ALL OF THESE OTHER THINGS, THE PUTTING ON OF APPAREL AND THINGS LIKE THIS. AND SO THEY SAY THAT YOU CAN'T BRAID YOUR HAIR, YOU CAN'T WEAR GOLD OR SILVER. WELL, IN THAT SAME VERSE, IT SAYS PUTTING ON APPAREL. DOES THAT MEAN THAT you, WOMEN SHOULDN'T WEAR APPAREL? <laughs> OF COURSE NOT. IT'S JUST SAYING DON'T MAKE THE FOCUS ON ALL OF THESE EXTERNAL THINGS. BUT SEE, RELIGION HAS COME ALONG AND HAS TAKEN SOMETHING that THERE IS A GRAIN OF TRUTH AND THEY JUST AMPLIFY IT TO WHERE YOU CAN'T WEAR MAKEUP, YOU CAN'T WEAR GOLD, YOU CAN'T PUT ON JEWELRY AND ALL OF THIS OTHER STUFF. THAT IS NOT WHAT THE SCRIPTURE IS SAYING. IT'S JUST SAYING THAT SHOULDN'T BE THE FOCUS OF IT. MAN, IF YOUR BARN NEEDS PAINTING, PAINT IT. AND IF IT NEEDS TWO COATS, GIVE IT TWO COATS. THIS ISN'T SAYING THAT WOMEN CAN'T WEAR MAKEUP OR WEAR JEWELRY. I'VE GOT ON A GOLDEN RING, AND I GUARANTEE YOU GOD LOVES ME, AND I LOVE GOD, AND HE IS NOT DISSATISFIED WITH ME. BUT SEE, RELIGION PUTS ALL OF THESE EXTRA THINGS ON IT. YOUR CONSCIENCE CAN BE MAGNIFIED TO WHERE IT CONDEMNS YOU OVER THINGS THAT AREN'T EVEN WRONG. AND LIKEWISE, YOUR CONSCIENCE CAN BE uh, PERVERTED TO A PLACE THAT YOU COULD BE OUT LIVING IN SIN, AND YOU JUST DEADEN YOURSELF TO THAT CONSCIENCE, AS IT SAYS IN FIRST uh, TIMOTHY CHAPTER 4. So, BUT YOUR CONSCIENCE CANNOT BE IGNORED. IT CAN BE VIOLATED, IT CAN BE SKEWED, IT CAN BE MISREPRESENTED, BUT IT CANNOT BE IGNORED. THIS IS THE NUMBER ONE WAY THAT GOD SPEAKS TO EVERYBODY, CHRISTIAN AND NON-CHRISTIAN, YOU HAVE A CONSCIENCE. I'VE WRITTEN THIS LITTLE BOOK ENTITLED FOUR BASICS OF HEARING GOD'S VOICE, AND THE FIRST WAY THAT HE SPEAKS TO US IS THROUGH OUR CONSCIENCE. THAT'S WHAT THIS BOOK WILL SUMMARIZE, AND THIS GOES SPECIFICALLY INTO THE TEACHING ON YOUR CONSCIENCE. WHO TOLD YOU THAT YOU WERE NAKED? IT'S YOUR CONSCIENCE THAT TELLS YOU THAT YOU'VE SINNED AND COME SHORT. AND THIS TELLS YOU HOW TO DEAL WITH YOUR CONSCIENCE, HOW TO PURGE YOUR CONSCIENCE, HOW TO HAVE A PROPER FUNCTION OF YOUR CONSCIENCE. SO THIS BOOK IS FOR A GIFT OF ANY AMOUNT. THIS IS AN ABSOLUTE FREEBIE TO YOU, AND WE WOULD LOVE TO GIVE IT TO EVERYONE. PLEASE LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER. WE ALSO HAVE CD'S, DVD'S, AND HERE'S A USB THAT HAS AUDIO AND VIDEO ON IT. PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. YOU KNOW, WE ARE NOW INTO MY 55TH YEAR OF MINISTRY, AND GOD HAS JUST DONE SO MANY MIRACULOUS THINGS. AND, YOU KNOW, FOR THE LAST 30 YEARS, WE'VE HAD Karis BIBLE COLLEGE GOING, AND I BELIEVE THAT IN THE LONG TERM, THAT Karis BIBLE COLLEGE IS GOING TO BE THE WAY THAT I MAKE THE GREATEST IMPACT ON THE WORLD, BECAUSE WE, IT'S NOT JUST ABOUT ME MINISTERING, BUT WE ARE TRAINING UP OTHER PEOPLE AND IMPARTING THESE TRUTHS INTO THEIR LIVES AND THEN THEY WILL GO OUT. AND I BELIEVE THAT CUMULATIVELY, ALL OF THESE PEOPLE, WE'VE ALREADY HAD OVER 12,000 GRADUATES. WE HAVE AROUND eight OR 9,000 PEOPLE RIGHT NOW THAT ARE GOING THROUGH CARIS AROUND THE WORLD. THE SUN NEVER SETS ON CARIS. AND I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS MAKING A HUGE IMPACT. BUT IN ORDER TO FULFILL WHAT GOD HAS TOLD ME TO DO, WE NEED 
to increase our campus. We are actually stretched right now and we don't have student housing. There was over 550 people who wanted to come and could not find a place to live. So we are in the process of building student housing, a student activities center, athletic center, a hotel conference center, performing arts center. You can go to awmi.net slash campus and we have an architectural thing there where you can actually see a flyover and go inside the buildings and see what they're going to look like. In order to do this, it's going to cost a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm looking for more partners, people that will on a monthly basis support us over the next 10 to 12 years as we get this built. So I encourage you to go to awmi.net slash campus, look at this campus reveal that we have, and there's also a place that you can sign up and become a partner, so check it out, and please partner with us as we expand our Karis Bible College. You know, on today's program, I was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, receiving salvation and speaking in tongues. And if you haven't received either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I would like to encourage you to please call our helpline. We have that number right there on the screen and we have people waiting to pray with you. I encourage you to call and receive either salvation and or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Andrew is offering his booklet, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, as his free gift to you today. This booklet is limited to one free booklet per household and is available in the US, UK, Canada, and Australia. Contact us today to receive your free booklet. Andrew's complete series, Four Basics of Hearing God's Voice, is available in a CD or TV DVD album and as a USB made from our daily television broadcast. This teaching is also available as a DVD album or USB recorded live at a ministry event. Each of these valuable resources is available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. This entire series is also available for audio download absolutely free from our website. Also on today's broadcast, Andrew mentioned his book, Who Told You That You Were Naked? This book is available in English or Spanish for a gift of any amount when you contact us. We also want to remind you of Andrew's Living Commentary software. The Living Commentary includes more than 50 years of Andrew's Bible study notes and personal encounters with God. Get Andrew's Living Commentary today for $120. We want to say a special thank you to the Grace Partners of Andrew Womack Ministries. Your gifts make it possible to put free ministry materials into the hands of many people in need. If you're not already a Grace Partner, we ask you to pray about becoming one today. You can become a Grace Partner through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. You can also order resources or receive prayer by calling our helpline at 719-635-1111.